Welcoming everybody into the latest edition of the USFL podcast interview series, bringing you the latest from players, coaches, personalities, and many others alike from around the USFL. Today, we are inviting in two key members of the United Football Players Association. Now, if you have heard that name before, these are the folks that have helped spearhead the new CBA with the United States Steelworkers, or the U.S. Steelworkers, that is. And they get to celebrate a little bit because once this thing's ratified, when it's ratified, I know we've got January 6th, Things are looking pretty good for the USFL players. I'm going to bring them in right now. We have, of course, UFPA President Kenneth Farrow, who I've had the pleasure to talk to in past shows, and it's good to see him once more. And I get to bring on his good colleague as well, Ryan Cave, who is a board executive with the UFPA. Gentlemen, thank you for joining the show. I am very glad to get both of you on here. Um, I'll start with Kenneth and kind of swing things around. Uh Congratulations. How how have things been really this last week or so? Um, kind of getting to announce that things are at least uh tour at least on the final home stretch. Yeah, it's been huge, man. I, I wanna first just, you know, it's only right to start out. Uh Ryan has kind of took the lead on this, man, all of his experience in the arena leagues and things like that. So I've kind of been hands off a little bit, stepping back and um Ryan's definitely been the one leading the torch on this and kind of getting things done for the guys. So it's been really good to see um, the the progress and, and where we're at today with it. And uh, definitely wouldn't be here without my guy, Ryan. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, how are you feeling? I mean, obviously Kenneth gave you a great lead in with this. So, I mean, you know, that, I mean, you, you clearly have, have the experience. I want to dive in, of course, with your own AF, AFLP, you uh, experience background, but I mean, How's this whole thing been for you kind of now working on a different league to kind of set things up on your end? Man, it's, 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 it's been a blessing, man. I, I'm fortunate enough to have been brought on by Kenneth and, and, uh, and Nick Temple uh, to help help as much as I could. Uh, I mean, I played 10 plus years, everything from the old, it was another league I'm not sure if you're familiar with called the UFL with yes. like Josh McCown and Dante Culpepper. That's where I really got my start out at after college. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, CFL and uh, Arena League is kind of where I made my my, my staple there. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be brought on by those guys. And, you know, I mean, without the leadership of Kenneth and, and Nick, you know, I mean, kind of spearheading this thing and some other guys like Don, and Jake Payne, Coach Rob, you know, I mean, really wouldn't have been able to kind of do this thing. But uh, so it, it was definitely a group effort with this. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I've had my experiences kind of, you know, I mean, with the AFL doing two CBAs there. And was fortunate enough to be brought on with the, I mean, uh, with the steel workers. Uh, they they have been an amazing organization uh, for for the UFPA to, to to partner with, and uh, I, I'm glad I got to work with some incredible individuals over there as well, kind of spearheading this thing and, and uh, learning from how the steel workers kind of do things and um, how that kind of translated and everybody worked together to get a uh, get a deal done. Also, you know, I mean, big shout out to uh, uh, legal team uh, Richard Rucco down in Birmingham, kind of uh, a labor attorney down there that kind of helped out. Alex Perkins, uh, another steel worker that uh, staff rep that helped with the negotiations as well. Um, but yeah, man, it was a great deal uh, for the players. Uh, our, our bargaining committee was was huge in this. Some of the players, you know I mean, doesn't go without saying Devin Gray, wide receiver, uh, Philadelphia Stars, uh, Van Lee, quarterback, Maulers, uh, Jonathan Newsom, uh, defensive end, with uh, Birmingham Stallions, you know, they were the champs. You know, we heard that every time ever, all the guys got together, you know, he bragged about being the champ oh, down there. Of course. Uh, you know, I got to finish the season get that whole thing. I bet he was nonstop on that. <laughs> yeah, man. Dartez Jones, uh, Christian Scully, um, um, Trey Williams, Lance okay. Lenore, and you know, all those guys were part of the bargaining committee. So uh, just to have everybody around, everybody putting your input in was great. Um, so the USFL is definitely in good hands from a player standpoint. So, no, Ryan, I want to, I want, I want to get this off and rolling with you. You had, you had plenty of me, plenty for me to spin off there, spin off there. And I, I, I want to hit on this first. And I think people kind of asked this when they first saw saw the news. You guys partnered up, or you were working together with the U.S. the U the United Steelworkers. That is, you mm -hmm. know, and I think first people they stop and they go, well, wait a minute, football, steelworkers, and late and kind of the labor or at least trades kind of sector. Where's that, where's that fully go with the connection? But I mean, I'll be honest, my dad's and my dad's laborers. He's been laborers, you know, his life. He kind of explained that to me. However, I'd love to get your thoughts, at least 
what did what is the u.s steel workers uh section what do they bring to you guys um what, what's the expertise where's the connection how'd you guys get connected man so i i first got involved with the steel workers back in the arena football league as well um they helped us out with some legal um you know, I mean, all of the unions kind of stick together and we were up and coming with the AFLPU back in, uh, once that league came, once the league came back from its uh, folding back in 2009. Right. Um, a labor attorney by the name of John Stember, who does a lot of stuff with the steel workers as well, um, kind of came together and started working with us. So the relationship has always been there with the AFLPU and the steel workers at the time. Um, so as we were going around, kind of looking to see where we wanted to take the uh, the UFPA at the time, um, a number of different organizations, different unions we were kind of looking at, but ultimately we decided to settle upon um, the steel worker. It was a great partnership there. Everything from President Conway, uh, the Secretary Treasurer, uh, John Shin from Director of Organizing, Maria Soma. Um, the whole union, the whole United Steel Workers USW has been amazing to work with. Um, and, and their leadership there, you know, I mean, they're big. Uh, they're big with it being everybody's union. Man. So so mm -hmm. sports was kind of not off the table and they were very excited. They're diehard Steeler fans, most of them. So, you know, I'm a diehard nice. Jags fan. So, you know, I mean, that conversation was a little tough there. But, um, you know, I mean, they're diehard football people down in Pittsburgh, I mean, up in Pittsburgh there. Um, they, they're, the, the offices are literally maybe a quarter of a mile from the Steelers. So well, everybody, when, when, when the football kind of thing popped up, it was just a natural uh, natural partnership there, and we will be, you know, I mean, forever grateful uh, to the steel workers. Um, and it's 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 just the beginning. I I can only imagine. So I I, I will say, and Kenneth, I I want to chime, have you chime in on this. I remember our first conversation, and it wasn't even on this show. Um, your ambition was definitely at least when you were talking about the UFPA and kind of voicing it at the beginning here. That ambition has definitely been front and center since 2020. Um, where's the UFPA today? I mean, obviously the, obviously the CBA and getting that on the doorstep of being ratified for the USFL, that was, that's a big, you know, that's a big step for football in general. Um, where, where have you, where's it been since we last talked two years ago? Oh, you know, it's, it's been, like you said, I think our number one goal was to get the players a real voice in some of the situations that, you know, were coming up about as far as opportunities in leagues. And I think we've definitely uh, been able to accomplish that with the USFL. Um, other than that, man, we've just been keeping taps on, you know, whether it's the bankruptcy stuff, there's still bankruptcy stuff going on. There's still, um, there's still leagues coming up fraudulently trying to scam guys. I think uh, Joe McClendon is at it again with the National Gridiron League or United Football League. And, and so we got some people hitting us up about that. So, I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the day, the association and and the players union is, is, is now not separate, but we partner with the Steelworkers as our legal team. So the players association is more so just a tool for resources and trying to help guys out and, and opportunities and just keeping guys in the know of some of these things that we're continually dealing with. I know that the, um, the lawyers that had won the bankruptcy case for the AAF bankruptcy are now going after um, – the guy from the NHL league for ah, the yes. AAF. So that's a whole nother thing that we're going to have to roll out and kind of make sure guys are all on the same page. Coaches as well. Coaches are involved in that too, since it's the entire league. So uh, really that's kind of where we're at. We're, you know, we're looking at 2023 and kind of seeing what we can do. We want to be able to continue to help guys out, maybe provide some resources as far as educational things and things like that. Um, and so that's just kind of where we're at right now, you know, with, um, with the upcoming season coming coming up, like I said, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a step back to get ready to go here in the XFL. And um, and like I said, we definitely wouldn't be here without some of Ryan's work and some of the other people that are involved in all of this. So, um, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's that's our main goal is just to continue to help people, continue to help the players, and continue to keep those guys in the know of the things that are going on from previous years past. Side note, and I, I think you speaking, of course, being a former AAF player, um, and I guess a side skew, I'm still amazed this has been going on this long. I know legal processes take forever, but just shocked hearing you say, okay, we're still in some steps of even that. And it's 2020, it's about to be 2023. Um, it's crazy yeah. just to say the least. Just yeah. to say, that's all I got really for that. 
it just it boggles my mind. But luckily, there's better there's better things ahead here. Like I said, the USFL is a, is a great next step. Um, for you guys, I guess, and I guess maybe to give some folks at home a little insight, what is what's kind of like a mentality going in with, I guess, negotiating or kind of doing a collective bargaining type of thing going to the table? I mean, obviously, both sides have their own things that they have for goals or benchmarks. Um, you got to come together, try and get the best of both worlds. Where do you at least kick off things to start as a base for, say, a player's side? So you really want, you really just want to hear the players out because at the end of the day, it's their organizations, their union. Um, so you, you really want to just hear them out, hear what some of the biggest things are, the biggest concerns, issues, uh, what's not going right. But you also want to look at what's going well and what can you build off. Um, not just because all it's it's never all about the negativity. It's about so what's what they're doing well and how we can enhance that, um, all for the benefit of, of making the players uh, more safer. Uh, the working conditions better and obviously the compensation um, going well as well. But, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this. It's, it's, it's two sides to the bargain. You, you also have the other side as well. Um, so to have a, a actually a great partner in uh, Fox, because these negotiations weren't necessarily as challenging as, as other negotiations because you had a willing partner on the other side that was willing to uh, be a player centric lead. So, um, Fox being able to sit down with us and uh, talk with us about some of the things that were going on. The players let their, let their voices be heard. And Fox was eager and uh, to get the deal done. And that's what, and that's what happened. I mean, the deal got done. Um, there were give and takes on both sides, but at the end of the day, I mean, things were able to get accomplished, things were getting done and it's a great deal for the players. So guys, again, the CBA, um, Massive deal, as we've talked about, you know, I think major win, not only for just these players in the league, but I think a big step towards what else can come if you keep spring football going the way it is in terms of popularity and the options available. Um, I wanted to list off again, just for people's reference, but also get your guys' thoughts here and maybe some extra insight if you wanted on just kind of the, the details of the CBA, uh, you know, as it's going to be, as it goes towards ratification, you know, by the January 6th date. Uh, so, you know, first things first, you know, I think, you know, player increases. I think a lot of people were, you know, not only impressed by the active player raises, but the inactive players, I thought a lot of people, myself included, you know, just getting that massive bump, 66% increase uh, in that alone. Uh, it's got to be incredible that at least, you know, you get to have that stability if you're wanting to make a roster, but you also, you know, don't have to, you don't have to feel like you're stretching things thin. You know, housing, getting $400 a week stipends, as we mentioned on here. Um, you know, the roster size changes, which I was, I thought I didn't expect to me fully coming, but I was, I was really impressed. You know, gets it over a three year deal that increases to 42 after this first year in 2023. Um, all this coming, of course, in to start 2023 for mo most of these new details. Uh, I want to ask was, was 2023 always the target for you guys, or is it negotiations kind of go as they go? And maybe we are, if we can get things to work, 2023 is the goal, is the kind of finish line. Uh, was that originally the plan or was it kind of, were we hoping for a set no later than date, if we could do that? Well, the, the, the object of this or uh, uh, what you want to get done is try and get a deal done in, in place as soon as possible for the players. Um, organizing from that kind of standpoint was, um, getting guys in line, getting guys uh, signed up and things like that during the season uh, is always challenging. But the goal is always um, once you get uh, once you get everything situated from a legal standpoint to get recognized, then you definitely want to get bargaining underway and get things rolling so you can get a deal in place for the following year. Um, that was always a goal. And, and, um, we were just, you know, we're fortunate enough to get that accomplished for the guys. Um, but yeah, you ran off a number of different things, mm -hmm. um, uh, different, you know, I mean, articles, you know, what I mean, you put this, you, you, you build the CBA out in sections and then, uh, um, and then you put it together and make one big article and that becomes the, the, uh, totality of it. And that becomes the CBA. Um, so yeah, you talk about the compensation. It was, it was clear to the committee that they wanted to make the inactive players, 
uh, they wanted to get some of those funds and everything like that up for those guys because those guys, I mean, they might necessarily just be practice players at the time, but at any point they can be called up and they do the same work the other guys do. So they thought that was kind of low. Um, and the good thing about it is uh, Fox kind of thought the same the same exact thing from that mm-hmm. kind of a standpoint once they heard from the players. So it was a great thing for us to get that done for the players. And then uh, the, the big pay bump for everybody in totality was uh, was was great as well. Uh, so the um, and then along with the housing uh, was another huge issue for the, the player committee. And just to be able to get that done uh, uh, is is a big step in the right direction um, for guys. Um, you know, being in different markets as they will be next year, right? Uh, having to deal with the you know what I mean having to deal with home whatever home is and then having to, you know I mean, have a place to live when the city you're in can be challenging so for the league to step up and do those things and, and the player community able to get uh, a bargaining, uh, be able to get the uh, the housing stipend, things like that for the guys at 1600 a month is definitely a, a huge win for guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, you're saying that number right there, 1600, you know, I think me, me and, you know, Stefan on our own show back and forth, that, that's for any one player. That's a you can get a, you can get any access to you know pretty decent to a decent home and setup for yourself in really any market. You know, and if the league's trying to expand, you know, to anything, you talk northern markets, you talk different apartment rental rates. If you're talking that along the lines, uh, you know, and I, Kenneth, I mean, speaking to you, getting good housing, I mean, that setup has to be. It's a great peace of mind. It has to be for people like that, for players <laughs> like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Like like Ryan said, you know, <clears throat> a lot of these guys they got <clears throat> a lease wherever they live. They got you know a family wherever they live that they got to take care of there. And so it's just really difficult to hop in these leagues for three or four months and find some type of deal that makes sense for you financially um, as far as housing goes. So um, that was yeah, that was definitely one of the top priorities for players. And so we're definitely excited about that. That takes a lot off a of guy's plates. Mm-hmm. Without, without a doubt. Uh, I do want to revisit a little bit of the compensation. And I, I think it's just because it's a slight elephant in the room because we have, well, we got two outdoor leagues competing now for, you know, players. Numbers do matter in some regards. How much how much did X of the XFL's presence in terms of what they brought to the table affect, say, the committee's views on what they've thought maybe Fox could bring to the table? Um, well, let me say this first. Let me say sure. this first. Uh because I know we're doing this interview, players in the next over the next couple of days, your ratification meeting and everything like that is going to be coming. So be on the lookout. Mm-hmm. Um, should be some information, everything like that will be coming out to you shortly about having the meeting for um, you guys so everybody can get the deal and, and whatnot. Just want to put that out there. Uh, so that's coming. Uh, but, yeah, back to Fox and uh, the X. You said the XFL. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, man, it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a battle of arms. <laughs> so, Fair enough. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It's 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 basically going. You have two two competing two 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 leagues that are going to be competing for talent. So it was definitely on Fox's mind to get one to get a deal done and get a great deal done for the players in order to keep to keep talent. And you know, I mean, it's a race for arms. So. Um, yeah, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how things play out over the next few months and, and see how the XFL does in their first in their first year. But you know, I mean, it was clearly uh, clear to Fox that you know, I mean, them heading into year two that they feel like they had uh, the up the advantage. Clearly, having going through league year one and knowing the going pains of what it takes to open the spring league. So, um, and getting a deal done shows you know, I mean, shows the players that they're committed. Mm-hmm. They're committed to, to to enhancing the league, enhancing the the the, um, the stability of the players, and treating the players as a partner in this. And that was a goal of theirs and goal of ours. And like I said, we're grateful and uh, get a deal done. And 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 knowing that there's 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 labor peace between the players and, and Fox moving forward. That that another peace of mind right there too. You know, again, I love what I love hearing in this is, you know, and I don't it doesn't always come out with this with other stories with some, with other leagues at times, but I think the early relationship takeaways as you, as Ryan has said here, and I think, you know, Kenneth has also said here, just how the willingness of Fox to open up and, 
you know, sounds like going right to the table and saying, let's knock this down and hear, hear everything out. I, I love hearing this. I, I think that that's the best takeaway I could have gotten from this interview so far from both of you. Absolutely. And that's something, you know, like I've, I've said multiple times from the beginning of this whole thing is that, you know, <clears throat> our group of guys, our membership from the Players Association, our membership for the Players Union currently with the USFL, uh, we see these opportunities as golden opportunities for guys to continue playing their careers and continuing to play the game. There was never at any point, uh, you know, any combativeness or wanting to be uh, – and any type of conflict with these leagues, we just felt that as professionals and grown men have played this game for so long at the levels that we've had, there's things that could be done uh, that haven't been done at this level. And we see it as a level that has been trying to bubble and become sustainable. And obviously they do too, because they continue to come back and create these. He was the voice at the table in a partnership. And I think for the, uh, the willingness of Fox to come here and uh, cooperative with the guys and with the players, um, you know, I think that's a, a really good thing. I think that's how business should be done. And I think guys and players are starting to understand the business of this industry a lot better now. And so mm -hmm. I think it's all good. I think it's as, as long as everybody cooperates and, and keeps this same type of attitude moving forward, there's nothing but good things and a lot of growth that can come from this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Growth for, I say growth for this league, growth for you guys too. I mean, this is another experience type of type of lesson you can take with you. I mean, your guys' work isn't done just from here. I mean, you guys are the United Football Players Association. Football is in the name. Leagues and other representations you have already talked about can already be traced to things ahead. What, without maybe going into too deep of details, what, what are some things for the UFPA that at least you can hint that are on the horizon? for yourselves uh if, kenneth if you like to lead in or ryan you said for for what moving forward oh just for the horizons of the league uh, for the association you know kind of goals maybe outside just the usfl but just players representation in general yeah i think you know like i said earlier we're we're kind of done a lot of the um <clears throat> the foundational work um as far as making sure guys are getting squared away on just like key things. Like I said, the bankruptcies have been huge for us to try to make sure everybody was able to get their cut. And then obviously this was major for us to get these guys to the table in a situation where they felt like they needed a little bit of help um, just because of, you know, how things were looking when, when the start of uh, the USFL kicked off. And so I think those things are, are have been the meat and potatoes of everything and moving forward. Like I said, we just kind of want to add to the, um, to the resources that we're able to offer the players in terms of whether it's post career, uh, whether it's, you know, resources, mental health, employment, education, things like that. We really want to start being able to getting guys um, the help that we can and then connecting and making good partnerships that are going to be able to allow these guys to off the field and outside the season continue to grow um, outside of the game of football. Nice. Well, I love love hearing this, guys. I'm yeah. glad to have this conversation. I'm glad you guys got to join in today, uh, give tons of thoughts and you know analysis on just the not only just this, but I think the state of football is changing. Um, and I, I think the last few, just really this last decade plus, really half decade, even if we want to go more specific, um, it's only seems like it's not stopping right now. Um, and who knows what is on the horizons? But this is a good start for i think pl for players for fans of course and for you know the league itself in terms of the usfl and for other leagues that you might be exploring options with too um gentlemen thank you very much um ryan i do want to give one last chance you did you did mention it of course in uh while we were talking a little bit ago but if you'd like to if you like to repeat uh just kind of maybe information on for players maybe they some that are watching uh ratification details yeah um so the, the way the process kind of plays out is uh, we'll have a meeting with the players. Players, you know I mean, stay tuned. Um, in the next day or uh, next day or so, I know it's the holidays, everybody's traveling, busy and whatnot. Um, but yeah, we still have some work to get done. So there'll be a, there we'll have a player meeting um, with all of the players uh, to go over the deal and specifics, any questions that they have. And then uh, ultimately, uh, the players will have the choice to voice their opinion, whether they want to uh, vote uh, to accept the deal. I mean, 
the, the bargaining committee felt it was a great deal. And their recommendation, of course, is going to be to accept the deal and ratify the deal. Um, but like I said, ultimately, that'll be up to the whole entire bargaining unit. So how it works is the bargaining unit makes a recommendation. They bargain the deal because the bargaining committee was voted on by the players that were a part of the league last year. They were So the, those guys were voted as team reps, and they were ultimately tasked with forming the deal and getting the deal done. Um, so any recommendation they make is, beh- uh, is on uh, on behalf of all of the players and their recommendation uh, to, you know, I mean, put a tentative agreement together was ultimately they accepted the deal and it'll be up to um, the other players to, you know, I mean, ask their questions, get their questions answered. But ultimately we felt like it was a great deal on both sides. And our recommendation would be that everybody accepts the deal. And we, I mean, we get the year two and we play some football. All right. Well, looking to see what forward to seeing what's ahead. Gentlemen, thank you again for your time. Uh, looking forward to keeping tabs with both of you, of course. Uh, great to, of course, finally talk to you in person. Ryan, Kenneth, great to see you again uh, on the show, as always. It's a pleasure talking to you. Um, and until next time, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, catch you around the corner for our next interview soon enough on the USFL podcast. Thanks for having us.